Greetings lads and laddies to this newest tutorial for Conquest. How to paint a Knight of the Order of the Crimson Tower for the last argument of Kings and or First Blood. Keep in mind, this is not a Crimson Knight of the Order of the Tower, so my idea was to keep it more desaturated without a reddish cloth or tabard and uh, make the focus point the metals, the uh, rusty grimy metals and the slightly verdigris on the bronze or gold parts. Because this knight doesn't have much time to polish his armor while he fighting war against war itself. I took my time to paint this miniature in this tutorial completely and you see the used colors on the left upper corner. If you like this miniature feel free to comment, give it a thumbs up or share with your friends if you want them to see this one because they struggle on how to paint knights for the hundred kingdoms. We start with a primed miniature. This one is simply primed black because I don't like to show the white undercoat when I don't hit every surface. And uh, I start with the airbrush on the tabard. This is uh, Vallejo Game Air, a terracotta color. 72772 red terracotta for all these cloth parts in um, several thin coats. And keep in mind that you can overspray a bit cause the rest, the metals and stuff like this is painted by brush later. So don't be that annoyed when you spray over the surfaces. So this is just a base layer to give it some depth later. Nothing too special cause it look reddish but we go on to the more whitish tone. In this case the next color is dark flesh tone also by Vallejo Gameware to give it a base desaturated color for this off-white tone you've seen before. And the idea is that yes maybe he got a reddish tabard uh, at first but over the years of uh, continuously fighting wars and uh, exposing to sunlight and stuff like this the whole cloth has uh, lost its color and desaturated so that maybe around the um, around the saddle there is maybe some of the previous color shown through and the rest is uh, bright of white. Getting a mixed tone between dark flesh tone and sand or ivory by Vallejo Game Air. This is uh, roughly a one to one mix. Maybe there is a color you could use instead for this beige tone but uh, I need to reduce my uh, colors I store in my room so <laughs> sadly kinda I need to mix colors even if I don't like it that much. So you see how to apply it from the lowest part of the cloth going upwards and uh, reducing the airflow when I make this move upwards so that there is more color on the lower portions of the cloth or the farthest away from the reddish parts to say. Next up would be sand purely applied through the airbrush and uh, doing the same thing as before, just leave some of the previously applied color showing through. You could do it by brush, no worries, um, but as I've got no, no big amount of free time or I uh, got a limited time for painting my miniatures, I need to go quick and I get to need a quick painting concept all around the miniature so that I can make the most of my free time.
So, this is it. The previous step is the last one we can do now, and we touch on the cloth later. Next up, it is the metal tone. So, a giant, giant portion of the video here is metals. I start applying a dark metal color. In this case, it is Iron Warrior from Citadel. This is a nice dark metal color and I apply it on all the parts that need to be silvery metals on all the horses armor and the riders armor. Next up I take a sponge. This is a blister sponge from uh, some miniature transportation purposes and uh, I apply this color, this slightly brighter silver color, lead belcher in this case, with the sponge. Apply the color to the sponge, stipple it away on a paper towel, a bit like dry brushing, and then stipple it from above on the miniature. This has the effect that the lower portion, portions of the detail wouldn't be hit by the color, and uh, it sticks on the upper parts. And, of course, it is not a smooth highlight, it is more roughed up and more partially, so you get the feeling of roughed up metal. Not these high polished ones you could assume by a more pristine order of knightly order, where all the armor panels are polished all the day by servites. Next up, repeat this process with rune fang steel and focus a bit more on the more pronounced areas like a, the edge on the side of the armor panels and the upper parts so that you get a slight brightness transition with these metal colors. Of course we will get a matte varnish at the end so the natural true metallic cap metal sheen or shine that is showing now would be removed and we need to apply some quote-unquote fake highlights here. After this is done I take some pigment powders. There are several brands by AK Interactive, Vallejo and stuff like this and this is a dark brownish dark red brownish pigment. I simply apply some water and put it onto the miniature and you can uh, experiment with the dilution. This is heav heavily diluted to just give a bit of rust over all these surfaces and uh, the added bonus is that there is a slight recess shading with this pigment that is applied so you also get some more definition of all the armor panels and the uh, recesses in between. Simply apply it over all the metal parts and if you're not lucky with this get a damp brush and move the pigments around the miniature cause they stick uh, they don't stick that much. You could remove them with water until we seal everything down with the matte varnish at the end. Leave the pigments or the wet pigments plenty of time to dry when you apply them so that you don't move them around later with the next step. And if you like to, as I do here, you can get another pigment color. In this case I take a more reddish, rusty brown to give it more color, color variation all around and um, give it more of a rusted feeling. And this one is applied onto areas where I guess the rust would settle more, like in the deeper recesses and uh, around some of the, the uh, pins that hold the armor together, like you see here. When everything is dried, I pick Balt as a goat and apply it to all the parts that need to be golden or uh, bronzy or coppery or brassy, whatever you think this color should look like later, 
and leave it plenty time of dr to dry. And then I take Vallejo Game Color Aquamarine and uh, dilute it with water to give it the technical usage of a shade or glaze. And I glaze over all the golden areas very slightly that there is a slight verdigris all around. This one, no worries, could be removed or will be removed later and we can decide on how much verdigris should th uh, show through when we remove this. Give it just a good layer of glazed verdigris here. And if you want to go a bit more like the artwork on the limited edition um, command card, you can go with this verdigris color over some of the metal, the, the silver metals, and um, give it a slight glaze. And then I take Nylac Oxide, a more uh, turquoise color, to give more of the verdigris color variation. Next up, removing a bit of the verdigris with Bolt of the Gold again. Focusing on edges and on upper parts and let some of the verdigris show through. So I apply the color with a real damp brush that I don't get a total coverage with the first stroke of the brush. And you decide how much verdigris should show through with this step. And next up would be a brighter color, in this case Rune Lord Brass. And I focus on the edges here and there to give it a highlight like you naturally would paint it. The upper parts or the edges receive more sunlight and there is a slight brighter reflection of the underlying color. Apply it all around the miniature. Yes, I show it on the back side of the horse, but there's the biggest part where I can show you this technique. Metals part one is done. And the next thing is the leather tones. I apply a dark brown color onto the leather straps and the saddle at first. This is a dried bark, my most favorite dark brown color by Citadel. Got good pigmentation for good coverage and a nice color tone that's not too, too far into the reddish tones. Next up. Like I do with all my leathers, this is a more uh, nut brown color tone. This is Katashan Flesh Tone by Citadel. And I apply it like I would simply uh, normally apply highlights, get a good coverage and leave some recesses in the previous color showing through. Next up is Gore Thor Brown. Edge highlights onto the leather parts, but not straight lines small lines and small stipples and some horizontal lines into the leather strap like you see here to give the feeling of uh, some roughed up leather where are some some minor cracks in the material when it get old and as I've done reenactment and I got many leather straps on all my armor and all my uh, cloth I know how leather looks like when it got uh, worn up with uh, sweat and all the components in, in sweat like salt and um, maybe uh, weapon oil by my uh, chain mail and stuff like this. So I guess this is a good way to roughen up leather. This could be it, but I want to go a bit further later down the line with uh, some beige tones. In this case, I apply Steel Legion Drab to the rope that's around the knight's torso, cause the next beige colors could be applied to the rope too. And I want to save some time, so I paint the next parts together. And as you've seen, there is a slight overspill of color on the arm. Don't get worried about this. Uh, just wash out your brush or grab a damp brush 
and uh, remove the acrylic color. There's no uh, no uh, worry there. Next up, a uh, darkish desaturated beige tone. This is Bane Blade Brown. Onto the rope. Just painting in the direction where the structure moves uh, naturally and apply a additional coat on the leather parts just a bit less than pre previously with Gorthor Brown to heighten the uh, damaged nature of the leather. Yes, you can go with uh, reddish or orangey tones with this, but I want a total desaturated look and I like this more going across the beige color spectrum. If you like, you can even brighten this one up more with a brighter color like a Karak stone. Or you can use a glaze like a dark brown or a blackish tone to um, glaze the previously painted leather parts. If you want more color variation in the base tone, uh, this is up to you. I took Karak stone. Just here and there, some small dots and stipples. Uh, keep in mind that the rider is on the saddle, so on the upmost part in the middle there are no um, leather defects. Of course, the rider would sit there and why paint something that is uh, totally obscured by an object, of course. And then I put some more of this color on the rope, even less than before, and painting parallel to these uh, structure on the rope. To emphasize there is a three-dimensional or more three-dimensional look. Give it a highlight with a slightly brighter color, in this case it's a shapti bone, and I guess we are done. <clears throat> Next step is some of the small parts painted with leather so these small metal pieces that holds the leather straps together here and there or the belt bucket that you've seen before and this one is highlighted with a brighter metal color like you can guess all the people that paint miniatures uh, could know when there's space or the time for more highlights and this is the next step for the metal highlights i paint in some scratches and some edge highlighting here manually with the brush with the brightest metal color i used before this is a rune fang steel to give more definition to all these small parts here and there and there is a slight difference if you leave the previously only stippled highlights um, showing through to this step where I manually paint in some more highlights. This one looks a bit brighter and a bit more pristine-ish. If you want to go onto a this is totally worn up, effed up um, or Fubat, uh, just leave the previously metal highlight away if you want to go more of a yes this is a human without pestilence or stuff like this uh, apply this highlight. Next up there is a inner side of the shield I totally forgot I apply steel legion drap into it and uh, after this there is a desaturated um, beige color, more whitish of a tone. This is Rakhath Flash and I apply it in a really, really low angle to just paint some of these wooden structure that is sculpted into the shield. There don't need to be that much of a um, highlight cause this, this is a area that's showing or not showing through that much.
after this is done, there's time for the base. Yes, of course, the horse shouldn't uh, be affected by the color I uh, dry brush or paint on the base. And in this case, uh, due to uh, time constraints, I just apply dark flesh tone over all the base with an airbrush. Of course, it gets real fast onto all the areas on the base and uh, just leave it some time to dry. Next up, dry brushing on the base. Very simple. Two tones of beige. This is Bane Blade Brown followed by Karak Stone. This is kind of the standard basing technique for all my Conquest minis because I want them all sticking together on one table and looking good. Um, not these. Yes, this is this army. They come from a desert and they got a sandy beige tone, the other one coming from the north and there is snow on the base. I like if my own miniatures uh, sport the same base style and look good together in the cabin or in the cupboard I use right now. So as told previously, this is Karak Stone. Just simply applied by dry brushing. If you don't know what dry brushing is, search for a tutorial on how to dry brush or if you need to or want to um, get it explained by me then uh, let me know in the comments below now up to the horse there is uh, by luck this is not much of the horse fur showing through and I decided to paint a dark horse um, a blackish horse that um, slightly resembles a Shire horse, because those are real, real massive horses, and I guess a massive trampling beast is uh, well placed into a cavalry army. Next up, a slight darkish gray color. This is Corvus Black to uh, remove these unnatural black black from the miniature cause if a horse is at war the horse would begin to sweat and all this sweat will settle in the fur and the fur wouldn't uh, seem that black it would get a slight grayish shine and uh, i want to imply this with uh, the application of corvus black here and also I get my base color on the hoofs. Next up, Eshin Gray. Some minor edge highlights here and there on the fur, on uh, the ears, around the nostrils, here and there on the muscle strain strains that uh, could be seen uh, on the legs. That there is a slight more um, interesting definition here and there and if you like just get a search engine on your computer and search for horse or war horse and look how horses could um, be colored there are black horses beige horses brown horses there are white horses there are horses with a differently colored spots in their fur like uh, between the eyes down the nose and uh, on the fur that's surrounding the hooves on uh, the tail on the breast or some small dots or patches on the sides there are so many different variation of horse fur and um, skin tone showing through sometimes around the mouth and the nostrils and some are black some are uh, more of a skin tone, uh, flashy appearance, you could paint as you like. I decided to give it some variation around the mouth nostril area with these flashy tones and on two legs above the hooves cause I kept in mind this could be some variation of a Shire horse. Just Google Shire horse. They are awesome. They are so big, massive, and so beautiful. Yes. And if you like, if you like what you see, just type down in the comments below, Shire Horse. 
So the next step is preparing these different colored fur. Uh, I start with Dawnstone, some highlight on the hoofs, and painting in the base tone for the whitish fur. Just simply apply it, start on the lower part on these fur and work your way upwards till you think it is a good ratio in between the different colors and it would look fine. As well, there uh, I guess there are no standards how far this uh, different color would extend upwards the leg. I even seen a live horse um, where one leg is uh, white straight up to the kinder elbow. Um, so in this case it would be like the knee area. We would uh, recognize as the knee area. Uh, and the rest of the horse was totally black. So you could do as you like, because nature is a awesome thing that does things like it. Things think it would good, look good. Or also there are sometimes freaks of nature where it doesn't make sense, but it's, it's like this. So, next up, a brighter color of gray. This is Administratum Gray by Citadel. Applying the color on the, on the upper parts of the bright fur, like a edge highlight, and uh, on the lower parts, like uh, straight onto the hoof, on a more uh, patchy, more, um, more spacier appearance like you can see here. And I took my time because these are some details that stick out in the long run because the whole horse is desaturated, uh, the rider, the tabard, the cloth, all these um, parts are like a complete jumbled mass of uh, beige and brown tones and you could focus on these small details so I want to paint them as good as I can for the purpose of this tutorial. Apply this color like you would apply a edge highlight on other miniatures. As I said before, the horse would sweat and the fur would maybe clump up into these uh, thicker strains, so it is good. Next up is the final color. This is a slightly bluish gray tone. This is Uthuan gray to give it not this bright grayish unnatural appearance to fake him in a natural uh, looking gray fur. Yes, I know. It could be counterintuitive to give it a bluish tinted gray color, but uh, you can see on the long run, you can trick the eye thinking, yes, this is the correct color and it's not uh, not even a real gray, it is more of a real, 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 real brightish blue. Desaturated brightish blue. And keep in mind, these are only ideas that you can pick if you like your horses in a plain single color just go for it there is no need to invest the time in such details next up would be the mouth and nostril area the first thing is a uh, gorthor brown so a uh, slightly desaturated flashy brown tone and i work my right way around here till i think yes this is the proportion i want to go for you could leave the nostrils uh, blackish uh, in the inside, you can paint like flesh tone, you can uh, get maybe a patch of fleshy color like on one nostril and the other is black. There is so much variation in nature, just go for it as you like. Next up would be a bright tone, this is a bright, brighter fleshy brown tone with Night Quest of Flesh. Just apply it like a simple highlight 
a spacey highlight, uh, the uh, recess on the mouse, and the nostrils are left with the previous color, and I focus more on the highlights or on the raised areas. Final highlight is Bugman's Glow. This is a flashy flash tone. Uh, when I paint a skin of maybe humans, this is the darkest color. In this case, it's a horse. It's a set, different skin tone. This is the brightest color. And apply it like before on the more raised areas and leave the uh, other colors in the recesses. And uh, talking about recesses, I apply some glaze. This is a Reikland flash shade into the recesses to give it a bit of color variation there. Next up, cloth part two. This is Wraithbone by Citadel. I apply it like a simple highlight here and there on all the raised parts, raised areas, and paint in some brush strokes here in there into the uh, spaces there to give it a appear of a roughed up edge of the cloth where uh, the fabric is worn off and there are textile defects here and there. This is just my standard technique. If you've seen some of my tutorials so far, uh, maybe you know this already. And uh, I don't get uh, my head wrapped around too much on the upper parts because I guess they uh, haven't that much weight. Yes, you could um, highlight the upper parts of the tabard with a brownish reddish tone, highly desaturated, but in my case I think, come on, F up, um, there is no need to paint this area of the miniature. The focus is on the roughed up edge down there. Then another highlight with a off-white color palette witch flash. This is the final highlight on the cloth and it is a slight variation in off-white um, comparing to the fur to give it more of a separation. Next up I glue in the rider and add some more verdigris here and there with Aquamarine by Vallejo again. Just heavily dilute it and uh, work it into some of the recesses where I think there need to be more of this uh, turquoise color to give the miniature more of a yes of, 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 of a kind of eye candy here and there because it's it's very very silvery metal I know it After this step is done, we are already at the base. Yes, the base could be um, done now, because the miniature is, is painted. There is nothing more we need to paint. And I apply some tufts by Gamers Grass with a bit of super glue. There are several different um, styles of tufts. There is dense grass. There is wild green small, there is uh, wild uh, dry, and it, there is dry green and stuff like this. And I apply to the base and the stand, like you could see here, to give it the feeling like this guy is riding across a uh, shire or meadow area. And this would be a perfect match with my gaming mats, because I like the green. Yes. Next up is some white glue and some uh, Gale Force 9 dirt for foundation flock. Just apply the white glue to the base with large patches here and there. And then 
just throw <laughs> the foundation thing uh, onto the base or the stand in this case that it would stick here and there due to the wet white glue. Push off or uh, bl slightly blow off the excess and uh, then um, if you just paint one miniature you could use a hair dryer like I did here or you can leave them some time that the white glue can settle. Keep in mind before you do this there is a chemical reaction in between the super glue and the white glue. Super glue if not dried totally would in maybe 90% of the cases dry out white-ish when you apply the the white glue next to it and you don't want it. So leave the super glue enough time to dry before you apply white glue. Just a small tip here, a small advice. Uh, some more white glue and this is a Gale Force 9 Spring Undergrowth that I apply here with these small flocks and these bigger chunks for a more vibrant green tone on my bases and on my stands. As I said previously, this is a standard basing technique. I don't show it in every tutorial. So for example, in the last one, the Sorcerer King, uh, I don't show it all the way through. Uh, maybe on each second or third tutorial, I would show you this technique. Next up, even more white glue and some leaf litter. This one is by uh, Green Stuff World. Apply small patches of white glue here and there, get a damp brush, uh, pick up some of this leaf litter and uh, put it on the base and paint some of the surrounding white glue uh, onto the litter to seal it in that it don't fall off or something like the litter breaking off. And there are these smaller parts in there, like uh, like small leaves or leaves of another tree. Put some around here and there to give it a more natural feeling if you like this style of base. If you like a totally different style of basing, uh, just go for it. This is just an idea, just an example how you could do it. It's up to you, of course, as always. Last but not least, there are Dump of Cain and Lords and Ladies by Gamers Grass. This laser cut paper plants apply some super glue after all the wet white glue has dried completely. Uh, bend the paper cut. Uh, laser cut paper flowers or plants into a shape and apply it with some pressure. The dump cane is like uh, applying two pieces above each another to give it a more natural appearance. And uh, after you apply this, leave the super glue time to dry and then you can paint the edges of the plants with a uh, slight amount of green so that this minimal uh, small white line that's showing through due to the production process is uh, painted over. And you could paint the base edges in a color you like. I like mine in a brown tone and as you can imagine in dried bark. There, there is not a, a reason why I shouldn't paint them in brown when the base is slightly brown. And afterwards, you, as you've seen, there is this Vallejo Ultra Matte Varnish through the airbrush. And this is the finished miniature where I'm right now painting the whole uh, three knight unit and a priory commander. I hope you liked the Knight of the Order of the Crimson Tower and not a Crimson Knight of the Order of the Tower tutorial. And if you got any ideas what I should paint next or any suggestions, write it down in the comments below. 
Feel free to like this video and share it with your friends if they play Hundred Kingdom and want to paint some knightly order knights in the future. Uh, it was a blast producing this video and uh, we see us in the next one. Maybe another one for Conquest, the last argument of kings or first blood. Till we see us in the next one, this is Dizzy out for today. Keep on wargaming!